Our research over the last 10 years across more than 30 countries reveals four capabilities that consistently emerge among those who can be described as culturally intelligent. First of all, they have high CQ drive. That is, they have an interest and motivation in cross-cultural issues. Second, they have high CQ knowledge. That is, they have a good grasp of cultural similarities and differences. Third, they have high CQ strategy. That is, they have an ability to be aware and plan in light of cross-cultural issues. Fourth, they have high CQ action. They can appropriately adapt their behavior for various cross-cultural scenarios. So what's the cultural intelligence difference? It said, if you cannot see my mirrors, I cannot see you. And we all know that when we have a car in our blind spot, that that's not a very good thing. In fact, it could be dangerous. But it made me think about our blind spots. It made me think about what our blind spots can do to us as well-intentioned people, and that sometimes, perhaps, we're not as inclusive as others, of others as we think we are. So I'll talk a little bit about inclusion today and about the inclusion paradox, that it is true that we are all human beings, and that we are all alike. We share a human experience. Paradoxically, however, we are all uniquely different. We all have different DNA, different fingerprints, different patterns in our eyes, and we all have different stories and different experiences and different uh, frames of reference on the world. All the questions that you shared over the last couple of weeks, and I'm trying to use this time to give you some answers to these questions. The overall theme from the questions that you, you asked has to do with how can I make changes? How can I work with others? How can I get others to want to work with me? So how can I be the driver of a culture, a high performance culture where we really mobilize things rather than get stuck with the state of school? When I, I read those, I said, well, these people have never really done research. What they do is they go to the uh, chief executive officer and they ask him a few questions Interviewing, and they, yeah. they call that research. Half an hour and then... Uh, they call that research. And but in, in management in my field, case, uh, it's very in, difficult finding a researcher. Of course. In my case, what I did is I got data from the people who work. central to our way of life and the driving force for many of the 20th century's greatest advances. Travel, communication, labor saving in the home. Thanks to massive improvements in energy supply over the last hundred years, these and other breakthroughs are reality, not dreams. With energy use expected to double by our 2050, our scenarios are not mechanical forecasts, 
They recognize that people hold beliefs and make choices that can lead down different paths. They reveal different possible futures that are plausible and challenging. Our latest energy scenarios look at the world in the next half century. We believe we are entering an era of revolutionary transitions. Rise with a